Hi, I'm George Nordhaus, and we're going to be talking about tomorrow's agency today. We're going to be talking about understanding your agency. This is a talk I'm doing for the PIA of Indiana. It was a talk was destined to be done for the PIA of Indiana had not two planes had problems getting me to Indianapolis on time. Uh, luckily, a couple of your good people filled in, and that was great, but Here's a, here's a, here's what it was all about, and I want to talk to you all, uh, about well about 50 years of insurance marketing. I've been around that long. Gosh, it's amazing. I got my second job. My first job was a well after the Navy was a Tennessee insurers of Tennessee running it, but the next job was running the Big Eye of Indiana for four years in the late seven, uh, late 60s. Believe it or not, and the business then was a lot different. You know, and it helps to know the difference of businesses. Uh, I mean, what's happened over the years, I think, to all of us. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what happened in, in, in the past in the business. Back then in the 60s, it was really personal. Boy, you knew everybody. You loved it. You uh, I mean, you knew the local person. May he, he or she might have been the godmother or godfather of your of your kids, and you knew the local managers. You, you knew everybody. It was really, really what we call a relationship business. It was mutual versus stock companies. It had a big eye campaign came along in those days that you know, you knew about that. And of course, we had two associations. The big eye was called the IIAA back then, and the PIA. And uh, they were really at the mutual versus stock was interesting because you know the mutual stock companies looked down on the mutual people. Oh my gosh, because they were they were bad. And that was a PIA. Of course, it's all changed now. But you know, and it didn't, but it, those were the uh, those were the socialists. <laughs> And the stock company guys were the, you know, the capitalists. But of course, it wasn't that way. Anyhow, uh, competitors, of course, the big competitors were State Farm and Allstate. That's who we really had to compete with, and they were good, and they were really, really good. As a matter of fact, uh, I can uh, remember a lot of the Allstate stuff was was just amazing. Here's here's old ads from Allstate back then. Look look uh, look at this one. How'd you like this? Well, I got to have to tell you this story. You know, it said if you're in good hands, it said if I'm in good hands with Allstate, well, why did I just get the finger? Oh well, did I say that? I think I did. But at any rate, did you know that I didn't know this? But Allstate started out. There was a car, and it was look at the Allstate thing there, the, the name on the back of it. See, it was actually they actually had a car. It was named Allstate. Well, they sold it, in the, and you would, you know, all the jokes that everybody made with Allstate, and all of them about State Farm and all that. You're in good hands. You know, and and then also uh, your your neighbor, your good neighbor. What really happened then, in those days, was that these companies started building, 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 and doing well. How well did they do? Look at the numbers here. Look at State Farm is twice as big. Now this is now. This is now, fifty billion dollars, twice as big as Allstate, and as Liberty Mutual, Geico, and so forth. 50 billion bucks. And then you can go on down the list, of course. You can see the travelers and the AIGs and all the people we worked with back then and still are. And of course, some of them, I mean, these are pretty big companies. But it really makes you realize the size of a State Farm. When you look at a Hartford, it's only 10 million, less than 10 million. Isn't that amazing? Or a traveler's 20. And, and, and so State Farm's two and a half times as big as that. Isn't that amazing? Here's a good, good story, though. Auto Autos is down here. And the 16th in the country. Isn't that amazing as a regional? Uh, well, that's another story. Let's go forward. What happened in the 70s? Well, in the 70s, there was direct mail. There was ex-dating. Uh, agents were doing everything they could to get caller, to get ex-dates, and, and also to get the appointments. They used, uh, you know, people like that, pros. Uh, the relationship with clients, even more important than ever before, because we were fighting those direct writers, and they were good. Continuing education came along. How about that? Uh, agency management systems uh, remain bookkeeping systems. I was able to bring in, uh, back in those days, ARC, it was called then AMS, then Vertifor right now. I was able to bring them in as the association executive in Indiana for the big eye. And I did that back in, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the 70s, or the late 60s, actually. But it really came, took over in, in the 70s. And uh, it was very good. But... I started working right then. I said, come on, you guys, let's make these bookkeeping systems more in marketing because I was kind of a marketing guy. And, uh, well, you know, it just never was made that way. I wish it had been, but it wasn't. 
it was never has come yet. And even now, now we're well. I'm going into the 80s right now. The 80s, the commercial uh, telemarketing firms appeared, and they were pretty good. And, they, and the associations merged, or some of them did, some of them didn't. The PIA and the Big I, and you know how it is today. It's kind of a patchwork system all across the country. But the Big I program was cut way back, and that was a tremendous mistake back then. They were uh, they were acknowledged. People knew who the Big I was. Uh, your independent insurance agent served you first. Somebody convinced them that it looked uh, that the Big I thing looked too much like the uh, post office. Uh, logo. Well, I don't know what it was, but it was a, it was a bad move. At any rate, I won't go there right now. But the banks entered the insurance business. Boy, that was something. And I mean, it was fight. It was a fight to get. And I, I can't even tell you how bad it was. Uh, it, the Florida Association sued the banking industry. Even Florida Big Guy. It didn't work. Then, of course, the banks made it. Some made it very well, and some didn't make it very well. And you know, all kinds of things are happening. I just saw yesterday where. Um, Wells Fargo sold uh, 40 of its insurance outlets to uh, uh, to a national broker, one of our national brokers, and, and I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe it, but that's what's happening. Well, this has gone a long, long way, but that was the first time, boy, were we scared. They know everything about us. They know everything about the customers, that is, and that's unfair, we used to say. Well, needless to say, automation systems still weren't used for marketing, just for accounting, and of course, uh, applied, and uh, ARC took over the uh, the world, and, and uh, they still are, of course, way, way bigger. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Service centers began. That was the first of the service centers. A lot of people have used service centers pretty well. I'm not uh, I'm not arguing with that uh, because they, they have played a place, and they could play a place, maybe even better. National insurers disappeared, like Home, USF, and G in the 80s, INA, INA I mean, gosh, can you imagine uh, those wonderful – they were wonderful organizations. Why did they disappear? We don't have time to go into all that right now. But all of a sudden, the regional insurance companies flourish, like, uh, like I said, like auto owners, like State Auto, like Westfield, like uh, you know, on and on it goes. You can you, you name them. They started flourishing, and uh, they've done darn well. And thank goodness they were there because we'd all be in trouble if they weren't. Well, what happened in the next decade was in the 1990s. Electronic communications began. You know, I'm talking about the internet. Here it comes. Everybody was selling by price. The appearance of the internet came in, and in, in 1992, uh, agencies established websites, but they were mostly like brochures. Uh, agents looked to the internet for leads. Uh, then, for the first time around, not so good now. That's another story. Search engine optimization. How can we get our website to be better so we can get people to come to? It? How are we doing, and so forth? And then Geico, of course, and Progressive, and so forth. They took over the internet. No question about it. And I, and and we'll we'll mention that a little bit later. And how do we cope with that? But these are. I'm just getting you a little history right now as we get started here. So uh, anyhow, they took over the internet, TV advertising, and uh, you know what happened uh, really uh, to the rest of us. One thing I didn't like about that was that most insurers stopped co-op advertising. Now, there's still, it's still uh, companies that do that, but uh, generally speaking, they just stopped that uh, uh, totally in, in those days. And, and there was a lot of reasons for that. One of the major reasons was that agents didn't know what kind of advertising to use. They, they didn't have the marketing capability to compete with the Geico's of the world. And, uh, and the company's uh, representatives not done. They understood that the advertising wasn't being effective, so they stopped it. Uh, we could go in there later on if we wanted to, or I, I, I've done a lot of study on co-op advertising and good, bad, and indifference. Well, that was the 90s, and what happened? In the 2000s, the age of advanced communications begins, and boy, has it, and does it, and is it. And we know that, and that's just what we're going to be talking about. Well, what's the biggest cause of failure in agencies? Can you tell me? What do you think? I think it's lack of knowing what is going on in the business. I could be a bit prejudiced about that, but they have to simply know what's going on in the business. A lot of associations didn't help the agency as much as they should have. I'm not being critical of any one particular, but, uh, but associations now begin to understand that they've got to get agents to understand what's going on in the business. And, and the basic facts of the matter were, and still are, that there are three important actions to building tomorrow's agency today, and that's what we're talking about. Technology, marketing, and communications. And if you, as an independent agent, can't bring all those together, you uh, got a problem. So I won't, uh, I won't beat on that right now, but I will tell you that what we're going to do now is to take a look at least how George Nordhaus feels about 
this system or this world that we're in right now by going into each of those three. For example, let's start seeing if we really understand communications. Uh, how has communications changed? How have they, how's it changed in these years? Well, you know, five or ten years ago it was the telephone, the website, you remember? Newsletters, yep, letters in certain, in person, of course. That's just five or ten years ago. And what is it now? Well, it's a little bit different, isn't it? It sure is, in person, virtual meetings, text messages, emails, newsletters, blogging, social networking, having your own URL address, websites that both educate and entertain, and we could talk about that for a long time. Communications is changing, yes, the changing media. Look at the changing media. Yesterday, we had yellow pages, direct mail, newspapers, cold calling, internet yellow pages today, but you know nobody goes on the other pages, and we'll talk about that. Search engine optimization, informational websites, email, direct contact, yeah. But the irony is, in this world right now, is that while there have never been more ways to reach customers, would you believe that? It has never been harder to connect with them. It's hard. We got all these ways to connect with them, and it's never been harder. Why? Of course, they're overwhelmed with information. Well, the way we we reach friends now, you know, we text, we uh, we instant message, we phone call, we email, uh, we even show up at their house. Anything we can do to reach friends because it isn't as easy as it used to be. Uh, we don't know how to brand our agencies anymore. It's very difficult to brand. Back then it was very simple, though, to relatively simple at any rate. Now it's impossible on a national level. You can't brand your agency on a national level, even on a local level. What's branding? Best example of branding, what, what do you think? Guess, 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 guess. Which one did the best everywhere? Now, I'm not talking about an insurance company. I'm talking about Aflac's Duck. 92% of the people represent, uh, recognize Aflac's Duck. You see that duck and you know it's Aflac. You don't know what Aflac does <laughs> particularly, but uh, you recognize the duck. Well, that's another story. But the point of it is, it costs something now, they say, they who are the big advertising guys, say that it costs something like in the neighborhood of a billion dollars to brand anything, anything, I'm talking about Coca-Cola or whatever it might be, in the, on a national basis. I don't know what it is on a local basis, depends, I suppose, but it isn't easy how to separate it. What's happened in, in, in understanding communications? Video, boy oh boy. Would you believe this, that 80% of the internet data is going to be in four years, going to be the equivalent of, of, of 11 billion DVDs or three and a half million years, look at that, Three and a half million years of information on the internet, on YouTube, or wherever it is, it is. It's just a huge, it, well, it's a huge chain in attention span. I can tell you that. Geico uh, recognizes that. Uh, that's another story about Geico, but they, they have 15 second ads. 15 seconds, you've seen them. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's scary. 15 minutes, 15 seconds, but they want to get their name out in front of you. And we'll talk about Geico's name out in front of you, but in a minute, and how many times they do it, but just not to scare you about Geico, but just so you understand where we all belong. Let's go back to YouTube just for a second. In six years, YouTube has three billion, billion, remember there's only seven billion people in the world, three billion daily views, up from one billion last October. Uh, that's double the audience of the three largest primetime TV networks combined. Can you believe it? This is one, though, that blows my mind totally. Every minute now, 100 hours of video are added to YouTube. Did you see that? Every minute, 100 hours of video are added to YouTube. It's beyond our comprehension. It's beyond mine. I can't even understand it. Uh, at any rate, and, I, and you can't either, probably. There's so much, and we don't even know so much. I, I got a big kick out of one of them. I said, how, how important is YouTube? Well. Tufts University, it's up in Boston, it takes applications, if you want to go there, on YouTube. How do you like that, Maples? That just says something, doesn't it? Well, let me ask this, and this is just to, just to see how you do it. How many of you have more than one video on your website? How many? Do you have more than one video on a website? Sure, you must. More and more people are doing it. My gosh, why not? Videos are very inexpensive to do. To make yourself, you can make them yourself, or you can have them made, or you can go get the triple I or whatever they come from. But how many of you have more than one video on your website? Well, enough said about that. Now, 
uh, how good is video? How important is seeing and, and feeling? Let me give you an illustration, best thing I can do. Uh, there was, I, I love this. Uh, this is the price of gas in France. <laughs> can you believe it? Uh, it's a thief in Paris. He went to the Louvre to uh, steal some paintings. Uh, he planned carefully. He got best past security. He stole the paintings. He made it safely to his van. However, he was captured two blocks away when his van ran out of gas. Are you ready for that? Now, when asked how he could mastermind such a crime and then make such an obvious error, he said, Monsieur, this is the reason I stole the paintings. And listen to this. He said, I had no money to buy the gas to make the van go. Okay, you guys, that's tough. I know it. See if you have de Gaulle to send this on to someone else. I sent it to you because I figured I had nothing to lose. I know that's awfully corny and it's bad, but what did I show you this for? To show you how important and how uh, it is that you have to have visuals to tell the story. You couldn't have told the story any other way but the visuals. And I think it's the same thing about a lot of the things you're doing in your agency. And that's that. What about the Internet today? 2014. 80 90 percent of all purchasing decisions, you know that, are made on the Internet. Search for auto insurance, 80 percent. Holy mackerel, those numbers are awful, aren't they? 50 percent to buy directly, 3,000, I mean, 3 percent more a year. Uh, kids, or 65 percent of the younger people, get their news from the Internet. I, I've never been able to do that, but a lot of people do. I know my, my daughter does, and, and others. It's scary to me. Anyhow, how's Web doing? Well, listen to this. Here's another number that you can't understand. I can't. Maybe you can't. The web is doubling in power every two years. No kidding. In 10 years, the web will be 32 times as powerful as it is now. I don't know what that means. I just did the numbers there, and it's doubling in power every two years. In 10 years, ten, you know, two, four, eight, and so forth, spending on the web is growing at 30. 13%, I mean, that's what people are buying stuff on the web, 13% a year, no end in, in sight. It's just amazing. While we're trying to understand communications, every day the world creates 2.5 exabytes of new data. I didn't know what an exabyte was. It's a unit of information, computer storage equal to one quintillion bytes. Now I know, okay. Libraries of Congress, listen to this. Content of the Library of Congress is estimated to hold 10 terabytes of data in all printed material. Now, the recent estimates of the size, including audio, video, and blah, 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 uh, that was its common. Now, it's uh, gone from 3 to 20 in the last 10 years. Therefore, one exabyte could hold 100,000 times the printed material or 500 to 3,000 times all content on the Library of Congress. And are you ready for that? This is two and a half times every day. I don't know what it means either. It scares the heck out of me, but... Anyhow, that's what the world is all about there. Huh? All right. Now, I guess what we're really saying is that it's common knowledge that not, the Internet's just no longer the Internet. It's part of our life. I made this one up. Uh, oh, incidentally, the Internet knows more than you do, <laughs> and me too, for that matter. I made this one up, and nobody's ever quoted it. I figured maybe it was so smart that people would quote it. I said, well, it's common knowledge that knowledge is common. But it really is, isn't it? It's pretty scary, isn't it? It's kind of exciting. Well, no matter what I hear, and I love this quote, read or find on television, radio, or in a news, newspaper or magazine, I can verify it on the Internet. Would you buy that? I would, too. Because that's what the world is now. And, you know, I'm not telling you guys anything you don't know. I'm just trying to make it really plain that where we are and where we're going, we better understand all this. Google, you know about Google, 35,000 inquiries every second. Look at that, every second. Three billion a day, 90 billion a month. 83% of Google searches resulted in offline transactions. I didn't realize that until I got in studying here. Look at that. Offline transaction. Uh, <laughs> the combined stock market of Apple and Google is $398 billion, but are you ready for this? The amount that Apple stock has increased since 2005, more than them, more than that, more than more than Google, more than Hewlett Packard, more than Cisco, combined, uh, it is, that's, it's, it's more than all of those combined. That's what Apple is. Any time you think who's, who's in charge around here, you're not going to believe this number, guys. I can tell you. I looked it up before I made this, this slide. Apple has $159 billion in cash. Kid cash. 
How's that make you feel? More than most countries, certainly more in, in, in the United States, I guess. Well, one fact is perfectly clear. The Internet, plus all these other things, 4 billion messages daily on the Facebook, all forms, Internet, Twitter, social media, and so forth, it's the major communications tool. There's no way around it. That's what it is. We all know it. George, you're preaching, preaching to the choir. I know that, but look at this. This is the point. Customers are now in control of how they communicate with you in every way. They are in control. They want to be in charge of making purchases. They don't want someone else choosing them, chasing them, blah, 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 to get it. And the thing that you need to know as agents and I need to know as a marketing guy is this basic fact right here. The way people buy insurance has changed, but the way insurance needs to be sold has not changed. Think about that. Just think about it. Hmm? Hey, are we having any fun yet? No. I know, George, you're not having any fun. Well, uh, who are we dealing with? Who, who in the heck are we selling? How well do we really understand communications? I used to say there are four generations. Now there are five generations. Well, you know that traditionalists are silent. Those were, I was born back then, and uh, uh, so were a lot of you, but most of you were not, of course. We, they were called silence. I guess I proved I'm not that. Traditionalists or whatever. Baby boomers. Yeah, we know about the baby boomers of 264. Gen X, and that was from 65 to 80. Now you've heard, of course, we all deal with the millennials. Those are people that born after 1980, but now there's a new one. They call the people now between 18 and 34 Generation C. And what do you think the C stands for? Yes. You're right. If you said connected. This generation is connected. We know they're connected. Many of us listening to this are not connected very well because we're too old or we didn't start the right time or whatever. These guys, 18 to 34 and up, are all connected. So there's really two, two demographic groups that are going to change the way we do business. You know what? I need to change this slide. I had baby boomers and Gen Ys, the millennials. i got to change that slide. i got to go back to that other one and, uh, and get that C. I think we should be connected and millennials now, don't you? So I'll do that. Just think about that, though. They're changing the way we're doing business. God, there's so many blogs on the Internet. Aren't, you get them? I get them. It drives me crazy. I, 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 I'm not a big blog guy. I mean, I write a lot. But uh, let me ask you this. How many of you create blogs? How many people listen to this really create blogs? I don't know uh, how many of you do. I just wonder. Uh, it's, I'm not suggesting that you do it or not. I, I don't know. Um, oh, you know what? I, I, I wonder. I'd like to see what age seven or under, what are they looking at on the web? The young kids. And look at this, YouTube, Google, Facebook. Then I got to this one, porn. Are you ready for that? Oh, my gosh, Club Penguin. I don't know all these other things. Well, he may, of course, Disney. Some of these, you know, Hotmail, Gmail. But the kids, the kids, porn, that scares me. It scares me. It scares you. I bet so. It scares all of us, doesn't it? Uh, that's from Online Family, Norton. Oh, I love this one here. I brought this for you personally. No, you weren't downloaded. You were born. We have to speak differently to them, don't we? Well, the kids, they spend seven and a half hours a day absorbing media, you know, television. That's as much time as they spend in school. They multitask, you know, all these numbers. Activities are happening and so forth. They send 50-plus messages a day. One-third send more than 100. I mean, uh, you know, my granddaughter, who's 14, 15, she does not answer her emails anymore with me. She won't. She won't. She, she says, you text me or we don't communicate. Uh, brother, and so we don't communicate a lot of times, maybe like we should. Anyhow, 96% of Gen Ys have joined a social network. Are you ready for that? 96% of those people have joined them. They post content or they tweet daily on all that stuff. That's pretty scary, too. They post uh, opinions about products. Uh, and here's the major point, though, about this whole thing that we'll be talking about, social networking. 78% of consumers trust peer recommendations, while only, are you ready for this, 14% trust advertisements. And, boy, that is a speech for social networking. I'm not very good at social networking. I just haven't learned it like I should. I guess I came late on it. I've got about a 1,000 quote-unquote friends out there. I'm not using them, and I, I want to admit that uh, publicly. I'm going to, I'm going to devote uh, some of my coming time here to, to using that much better. Uh, I wonder how many of you guys actually use, uh, actively, I should say, 
use social networking. How many of you like me that you just don't really understand social networking? How many of you plan to leave the job and the social networking of the next generation? You know, that may be okay. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because they understand it better than we. So a lot of agencies that I know have, have put a person in charge of that, one of their younger employees. That's not a bad idea at all, is it? And I, I don't blame them for that in any way, shape, or form. Well, people, this, I think it comes right back to this. People who are referred by friends are three times more likely to purchase than visitors who click on online ads. Boy, is that scary. It sure is. What are these millennials saying about us? Well, uh, it's interesting what they're saying about 70% want you to be tech savvy. 80% uh, percent, uh, want you to have online quoting, want online customer service. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. that I mean, that's, that's obvious. Online policy management, online payment options. Sure, why not? We can all do that. If we're not doing that on our line, we should be thinking about it. That's what they want. And they're telling us they want it. We're not listening. It's our fault. 63% of the respondents see the insurance industry as old and boring. Does that tell you something? Well, we could go on and on in communications, but let's, let's, let's skip to another one here. And, and, and let's just say about the communications, kind of concluding that, that we've got to understand it. And it's not easy to understand. And uh, those of us who are studying it on a full-time basis find it's not easy to understand, but we really must know that this is the most changing time in communications in the history of mankind, and I think everyone knows that. Well, technology's a mess. <laughs> I'm not a mess, but I mean, it's, it's, it has changed so much, it's so difficult for us to understand. I like this one. This was, uh, uh, hey, you've been on the line for one year, and you wish to log off and get a life. How about that? Boy, isn't that the truth? Yeah, well, I understand that. Uh, but we need to understand technology. The agency management systems. Well, there's more and more that are coming along, and some good ones out there, and QQ and Hawksoft and other ones. We know about Applied, and we still have 90 percent. That's like one of uh, I think uh, Vertifor has something like 16,000 agencies. I don't know. Applied maybe 10,000. There's 36,000 agencies all told. At least those are the numbers we use. Most people use the Vertifor or Applied. I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent. They just did a good job getting in there. Both of these firms, incidentally, and you should know this, sold for well over, uh, each of these firms, I should say, sold in the last year or two for over a billion dollars. How do you like them out? Each of them. And one of them was a billion eight. I'll let you guess which one. Okay. Vendors, though, so these people say it right there. They say agents are using only 20% of our systems to capacity. And I'll come back to this down here at the bottom. No agency management system that I know about, at least those big ones, offer integrated marketing plans, a CRM, Customer Relationship Management Program. Well, when I'm doing a, when I'm doing a speech, I always ask how many of you either use Vertifor or Applied. You ought to see the names there in the, office. I mean, in, the, in, the, in the audience. It's pretty scary. But, you know, that's what life's about. Well, understanding technology is not easy. I mean, there's, you, we have to track our systems of marketing. We have virtual meetings now. We have cloud hosting, as you probably know, SEO, search engine optimization, Facebook tubes, all that kind of stuff, instant messaging. Yeah, we really all need to understand that. And I have to ask you the question, have you heard about Watson? Watson's is that $29 billion computer, smart computer, the one on Jeopardy. Remember that? It, it competed against Jeopardy. It has, knows everything there is in the known world. Uh, IBM did that. Well, what's this mean in the long run? Could it mean that Watson's, assisted by CSRs, are going to rule the agency of the future? I don't know. It may. When I saw this thing here, I, I flipped. I just got this a few months ago. Uh, uh, MetLife has something called the wall. Now catch this. It's a Facebook application, looks like it. Service and sales reps and call centers get an overview of their customers. They get all streams of customer data to let the reps see the customer's history, conversations with the company, any claims filed and paid, their various policies, all on a simple timeline. Are you ready for this? One click rather than 40 clicks. How does that feel? Their plus customers or their people. Now, we're not talking about, we're talking about MetLife, a life insurance company, but they'll also be in the property casually. Uh, one click rather than 40 clicks, and we've got all the information. That's where we're headed, folks, whether we like it or not. They're going to hire, are you ready for this? 1,000 
technologist in 2014. They're going to pour 300 million bucks into technology products, projects, and here's the thing, to better understand and retain customers. I saw an article by their uh, chief uh, information officer. They said, we're a 145-year-old company that's acting like a startup. Technology is not just a enabler. It's the fabric of the company. It's the future. It's the future of all of us, Gene, one way or the other. Well, and then the, the other thing we need to understand, of course, after we understand communications and technology, he's not saying we all do yet, but we must, must, must understand marketing. And there's no, there's no reason that we can possibly survive or no way we can survive if we don't understand marketing. Uh, uh, the marketing facts of life are these. There's no way to compete with Geico's in the world. No way. You don't have the money. I don't have the money. The insurance companies don't have the money. Geico's too smart, progressive. All these people with the money went out there. And there's no way that you, as an average agency, can stay abreast with all these changes in marketing. There's just no way. I know very few agencies in the country, and after my 50-plus years of working in them, I know a lot of agencies. And it's just even the biggest agencies are having an awful time keeping abreast with those changes in marketing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's something that we really need to think about. Oh, the Geico effect. You know, we could talk about that. I've written articles five years ago. I wrote a big article for Rough Notes on the same thing. But I went in about five years ago when I was writing it. I looked into, I Googled auto insurance. Are you ready for this? Five years ago, there were 56,700,000 entries. I like that. 56 million entries on Google. And they had all these lists of these companies here in the order of appearance after Google. AAA, Progressive. Uh, insurance, all states, State Farm, you know, all the people you would expect. These are others over here. It was just amazing to see all these numbers, all these people here. Are you ready for this? Here's some more. These are people. Maybe you don't even recognize a lot of these people. These were there five years ago, and they were quoting on auto insurance. Look at them. I never even heard of Car Seek. I haven't heard of a lot of them. Peppercoin, you, I just haven't. And I, but apparently some people do, and a whole lot of people jumped on the on the on the on the deal, didn't they? And then they came out, oh, look, well, here's a whole bunch more. I mean, you, I can go on and on with this thing. I don't want to bore you to death. But I went through this many here. I don't know how many that was. I went through this many right there before I got to the first independent agency. I like them apples. Wow, that is just amazing. Now, you think that's amazing? What did I just say? I said Google, If you once you Google auto insurance back in 2010, you got 56 million entries. I went in last week to Google. Are you ready for this? On May the 8th, I went in and uh, <laughs> phone ringing. I can't take the thing, so I just have to tell them I can't, I can't take it. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, because I'm recording. Okay. Uh, May the 8th, 2014, there were 589. You, you know. 589 million, I'm not a kid, 589 million entries on auto insurance. Go do it. Have a little fun. <laughs> How are you competing? Uh, I talked to one agent. He said, boy, we're really coming along on that. We're really coming doing it. I, I said, how are you doing? He said, we got, we didn't, uh, we're working our way upward up to 463 million, 250, And he was kidding me, of course, because there's no way. Well, we know that your website is a virtual extension of your agency. There's no question about that. People are saying, of course, if this is what I see, then this is what you are. Let me repeat that. If this is what I see, then this is what you are. That's what the name of the game is there on your website. Yeah, we know web presence is critical. Uh, it used to be more one-dimensional, how bad it was, just words. Now there's everything, chatting and videos and all the other ones. Three-dimensional, we used to say, to the power of six. Well. They see your website as a virtual extension of the agency, and I just said that. Uh, adopting more online technology, it's a good priority. I said that a minute ago. What are you doing? 89% want, want web-based support, online chat, of course, online blogs, instant messaging. We know they need all those things and all those things. What are they really looking for? Instant gratification and frequent awards, uh, rewards. Easy for me to say, isn't it? I know what you're thinking. You say, boy, George, you use a lot of statistics. No, I only use them 36.8% of the time. I hope you think that's humorous. At any rate, for the millennials who want you, you know, that we're working for, 
Social web, we know that. Millennials' mindset is we. We do this anymore. The boomers, the us, the older people, we used to say me. Well, now we talked about the millennials before. There's 70 million of them in the United States now. What are they saying? Boring and so forth and so forth. I already said that, didn't I? Okay, let's come away from that. Millennials don't have traditional boundaries uh, or an old-fashioned sense of privacy. They live out loud. They talk about their lives and thousands of other people. And that, blech, I don't like that. <laughs> Bet you don't need it. Definition of literate then. Literate. What is literate? Well, you can read. What is it now? You can email, text, instant message, decipher, and understand a bewildering amount of direct media. That's what literacy is anymore. A recent study shows that the average attention span in 2013 was eight seconds. Eight seconds. They go on your, they go on your website and it's eight seconds. Back in 2000, it was 12 seconds. I, uh, oh, 17% of page views on your computer, on your web, last less than four seconds. Is that scary? And, and only 4% of them last more than 10 minutes. I went, uh, I made a speech back in the year 2002, and I'll never forget it, in a room full of agents. And I said, how many of you have ever bought anything on the web? Are you ready for this? 2002. Two hands went up. Two out of that whole room. Have things changed in the last 10, 12 years? I think so. I am a mobile app. I, I, I know what's going on. You know what's going on. It's, it's scary on the mobile app. What is mobile app? And what is marketing? Uh, you know what it is. It's the use of wireless media. Uh, well, layman terms, it's your cell phone. It just isn't for talking anymore. It's just not, and we know that. Uh, there's a, so many million handsets back in 2000. How is it now in 2014 or 2010? There were 545 million. How many is it now? By 2015, 12% of all total global commerce is going to be done utilizing cell phones and apps. Whoa! Yeah, I found out this in the last um, a week or two when I was coming to Indiana to find out. I, I saw this somewhere and I can't believe it. How many of you still have landlines? I do. I mean, we have landlines here. I bet you do too, don't you? Are you ready for this? Only 58% of the households in America still have landlines. Everybody else is using the computer type, I mean, you know, the, the, the apps and so forth. Well, our cell phone still for talking? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. Then I, wrote, I had this script, and I didn't change this one in time. One in four. Now it's one in, a two in every four has no landline. A little bit more than that. And that's pretty scary, so enough of that kind of stuff. But I don't want to get everybody shook up here. I just say that, oh, and this I thought was very good, interesting. Conversations are shorter. The average length of call now is 1.8 minutes. Are you ready for that? It used to be two and a half minutes or two twenty seven, and that's just four or five years ago, six years ago. Boy, that is scary, isn't it? Uh, and you know, they think and they say this, and I don't understand it either. By texting, I can multitask between tasks between two or three conversations at once. I'm getting so tired of that, and I bet you are too. Well, what happens when most of the residents of, of the planet Earth carry a device that gives them instant uh, uh, information? Uh, the top ten companies. Uh, in desktop computing, Apple, Google, you know, Microsoft, they're going to shift their focus, no question about it, to mobile devices if they're going to remain competitive. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Apple still sells computers. I know that, but twice as much of its revenue comes from handheld devices and music. So how about them apples? Well, uh, mobile apps, yeah. Find new customers with mobile apps? Sure, we do. Deep in relationships with existing ones, target people geographically, and all that sort of thing. Maybe it's time to reinvent your business model. Maybe it is. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, oh, there's all kinds of stuff on mobile apps on insurance, and you know them, and I do. Who has apps now? And uh, on my phone, and the insurance shopper. What what all that stuff is up there for? I get a little tired of it. So do you. Progressive can do all kinds of stuff. You can get in car insurance quotes and buy a policy and make your payments and get directions to the local progressive local agency, compare results, you know, clap track claims and all that kind of stuff. And you can even watch the, oh, isn't that wonderful? Watch the latest progressive TV. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, but look at this. Uh, Geico's mobile apps. Uh, you can even uh, purchase auto insurance policy using, are you ready for this, the mobile devices at the same time they're buying a new car. Does that scare you? Me too. State Department even has an autoresponder app, and this was interesting. It answers the phone for you while you're driving. Doesn't that make you really feel good? <laughs> How about that? Well, 
uh, it's just wild. Yeah, I, I, the AO providing, uh, oh, we provide it for my firm. And I don't want to get a, 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 this is not a commercial, but I would say this, that if you're not using mobile apps, these are the things that you ought to put on it. And we found that over and over again and put on it. And if it's possible for you to do it, let them go to your whole website right on the mobile app. That really works for you. And 85% uh, of the handsets anyway have a web browser on them now. So another story. Okay. Uh, anyhow, uh, this slide here was, a, was valid until May the 1st. It's not valid. I had a slide that says some of our competitors are getting ahead of us. So we're now focusing on mobile technology. Stay tuned. Guess who said that? You got it, Walmart. Did you see last week where they came out and Walmart's now made a deal with a New Jersey uh, insurer or whatever, and they are offering auto insurance, and that's only just beginning. Not trying to scare you, just want you to know. So the question is this, how many of you are offering mobile apps to your clients or prospects? And uh, if you're not, it's time you did, and you're going to have to whether you like it or not. Well, enough of that, too. Enough of that. Okay. Social networks, we could talk about social networking a long, long time. Once again, I would suggest you do this. If you don't understand social networking, get your kids to do it in your, in the younger people in your agency. If you do, or even if that doesn't work, uh, bear in mind that uh, the, the people spend an average of seven hours a week on, on Facebook. Get you, uh, 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 oh, this is for my, 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 my granddaughter, 11% of teenagers email daily. Um, you know what the popular sites are. I, there's, a, there's a couple of firms out there that are very, very good that can handle this for you. Look them up. They are really good. I'm, I'm happy to, to give you any uh, advice you need on that. I, I know who they are there. Uh, Facebook, we've talked about that idea. Uh, I don't want to beat up this thing. Um, say Facebook, I'm seeing now, and here's all the stuff about Facebook, and uh, you know it and I know it, so let's don't spend any time on it. <laughs> I love this one. Well, we're in the Facebook ages. We all know that. But uh, uh, and look how much money Mr. He had his 30th birthday yesterday. <laughs> how do you like that? 30th birthday, the Katzenberg. Okay, can you say no to Facebook? Uh, anyhow, I don't know that you can. Uh, the biggest social networks get more pressure is every time more people join them, pick up speed as they go. But look at this. Look at this. Are you ready for this? One out of three. Look at Facebook when they're in the bathroom. Oh my goodness, can you believe it? <laughs> that okay, constant contact, Facebook presence now, uh, important to our business and all that. I, I, enough of this. I'm, I agree with you, it's too much. Uh, companies grow faster on the web and web companies grow faster when they are social. And we know that and that's enough. Uh, yes, is social uh, media measurable? The answer is of course they are. It is uh, in a lot of different ways. I uh, can't tell you how to do it, but I, I, people who work for me can. I can promise you that because we measure it now. And what are they getting out of it? Uh, it? It's like a brochure without a salesperson. It does some of the work, but without a complete marketing strategy surrounded, it, it isn't going to work. Uh, social uh, media optimization, same thing. You know, I, we've talked and talked and talked about it. Enough said. How can we master uh, online off uh, online relationships in the business? We've got to know who our customers are, how much time they spend on the web, what's their mobile behavior, what devices are they using, what's their social behavior, what social uh, sites are they using, uh, at what time and place might they think of, uh, and they need our services. Those are all discussions. How are mobile and social users impacting our bottom line? And we've really got to know that. And if you don't, I'd suggest you find out. Okay. Well, 10 years ago, there was 360 million Internet users. Now there's 2.7 billion. It's just new media, and it's just unbelievable. Here's the fact. Every prospect, every customer, here's my whole point in this first half, of every agency knows that he or she can buy insurance from someone else and pay less in the process. Every one of your customers knows that. And they all will say, yeah, but I'd be agreeable to pay more. If only, if only, if only what? If only what? And that's what we call the differentiator. And I'm going to talk about that in my next uh, 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 taping for you here, but it's a differentiator. What is it? In this age of conversational marketing, the path from lead to sale has become longer and it's more complicated. It's just more complicated and that's as much as we're going to get done today and it really kind of gives you a background. Take this tape, 
you are look good. It's on YouTube. Go show other people in your agency. Send it around. I'm happy to have you do that if it'll be helpful for you. Because what we've done is laid the groundwork, and then we're going to give you the actual suggested actions on how to complete this. Okay. So that's the end of this for today. Uh, go say hello to somebody nice. Have a good time. Make your days better. Remember, this is not the end of the world. It's only the beginning of a whole new era. It's going to make us all very, very wealthy. I'll see you next time.